Man, get a load of this quick. Russian sailor in Petro Pavlov's talking to his old lady in Moscow. I mean, he must have been away for years because she is hot. <laughs> oh, God, get out of here, you pervert. It's all in the line of duty. Uh -huh. My mother knew the things I had to do to make a living. Out. See you later, fella, and uh, have a nice night.
Yes, sir. I'm sorry Mr. Lenkowski is not here to receive your call at the moment. But I'll make sure he gets your message and calls you on his return. Come. National Security Council, Mr. Lenkowski's office. Mr. Lenkowski. Yes? Mr. Burt from State Department is on the line. Put him on hold. Yes, sir. You got that call for me? They've put us on hold, sir. Good day to you, Mr. Burke. Yes, good day to you, too. Secretary Schultz is anxious for a reply to the memo we sent you a week ago. I understand your anxiety, but uh, I ask the Secretary to understand that it's coming up on Labor Day weekend. The President and most of his cabinet are in California. Things are not moving as swiftly as they might if he were here in Washington. I'm afraid that people like us are just holding the fort. Well, we need the president's comments as soon as possible. The secretary goes to Madrid in two weeks. I'll do my best to expedite the matter, Mr. Byrd. Well, we would certainly... Appre we would certainly appreciate that. Secretary Schultz has an inordinate liking for the world stage. We can't prevent Schultz going to Madrid. Madrid is unimportant. What's at stake here is a principle. The USSR has not changed since the time of Stalin. The State Department refuses to accept that. We can't conceive of living in a situation of permanent conflict with another country. We can. And must. How about you? Well, Mrs. Reagan called six times from California about the reception on the 21st. And the president wanted to go riding, so I got a couple of hours peace. Everybody in this goddamn town's in California. What are we doing here? Did you ever run into this guy, uh, Lenkowski, at the White House? Yeah, yeah, I've heard the name. If we get a chance to do him in with Nancy, don't hesitate. <laughs> Let me guess. He's with the National Security Council, yeah, isn't he? Yeah, he's messing around in foreign affairs and he doesn't know the first thing about it. Well, you know, they don't like you people at state. I think you're a bunch of wimps. Yeah, yeah, I know. Easy meat for the Soviets. I've heard it all. So why doesn't Schultz stop them? Well, you know better than anybody else. Access is the name of the game, right? He's got the president's ear. We don't. But the secretary has a direct line to the president. Well, something's going on. Every memo... Everything to do with the Soviets has to go through this guy. It's like he's the keeper of the gates or something. It's not like you to give up. I'm not giving up. Three, 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 there. Moving fast, 300 meters a second. 500 miles an hour. More than that. Altitude, 30,000 feet. Heading position 242. Two. New position 331. Three, He's crossing the 12 mile line. He's in Russian airspace. Going straight in. What? Yeah. Shit. Excuse me. Sarge, you better take a look at this. It's really bizarre. What do you think? Well, whatever it is, it's already over their coast by now. They coded at 88? Yeah. 
Unknown aircraft, possibly lost them. You should hear them. They're shitting themselves over there. Couldn't be one of ours. <laughs> Check with Strategic Air Command. They might be about to lose one. What's it look like, Sergeant? A long night. Take it easy. Get it right. Nothing. Not one of ours. What do you got? Do you got anything, Jackson? Not a thing. Come on, Sarge. Give us a what break. What frequency you got, Clark? Don't keep it to yourself. Chuck, I think. Could it be an exercise? It's not like any exercise I've ever heard. What's your judgment, Sergeant? Okay, everybody, pay attention. Air defense, bombers, air float. Hold on to what you're doing. We're picking up action on 1505. Soviet radar operator Jack Kamchatka. Search the band. Try all the frequencies, and I mean all the frequencies. What's the nearest field station we got to Kamchatka? Whack and I. Better get onto them. See if they can pick up anything for us. Yeah. Such a moment. Could I have a In the read on six double zero. The wing is scrambling. Sarge, I got two fighters. No, they're scrambling three. Negative four. Heading two four zero. They're chasing. Whatever it is, they're chasing. Target is now at 095331, heading 240. Where does that take him? Vladivostok, if it keeps going. Jesus, that's a Navy base. Okay, we have two aircraft in pursuit now on 995-329. Two more on 995-330. Now, no, just, just hold on a minute, Sergeant. What the hell's going on? Look, sir. The Russians have picked up an intruder over Kamchatka. They don't know what it is, nor do we. They got four fighters up looking for it, and they've painted it hostile. Beautiful, Norma. Ah, oh, shit. <laughs> That's real hard luck, Norma. All I was saying, Gene, is that he's turned our briefings into some kind of Hollywood extravaganza. Ah, oh, good one, Hank. Lucky bastard. <laughs> you know, Hank, sometimes I think you'd be happier if the Air Force was still flying Mustangs. Maybe. The main thing is we're an intelligence outfit, not a game show starring General Tom Tyson. Come on, Hank, shoot. Oh, way to go, Hank. It's really screwed you this time. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Oh, boy. Bottom English. I know. <laughs> Come on, this ain't for the farm. It's for 10 bucks. Is it true General Tyson got hate mail from his own man, Gene? Come on, that's dirty pool, Major. I just thought as Gene was with him on the Pacific. You're just trying to screw us out of ten dollars. Apologies. Right. I apologize. All right, look. Shh. General Tyson is a very able man. A man of succinct views, yes. But when he came here, you guys were a laughing stock. Air Force intelligence was a joke, so he kicked some ass. It was ass that needed kicking. And now Air Force is respected and the intelligence community again. I mean, why do you guys resent him so much? Because he's a tight-assed, ambitious little shit. Oh. And that was your best shot, Gene. <laughs> Jeez, will you look at that? Disappeared. They're calling back the fighters. What the hell's going on over there? 
Do you want my opinion? It's a critic. We better think hard before we send one of those. Seems pretty damn important to me. Do you understand the implications of sending a critic message? I know it's top rated. Top rated? Within 20 minutes of receipt at Fort Meade, the National Security Agency must notify the president. If he's asleep, he'll be woken up. If he's in a bathroom, he'll be dragged out of it. If he's in a meeting with God Almighty himself, he'll be dragged out of that too. Every department, every agency, it goes right around Washington. If you sign a critic and you turn out to be right, he'll be a hero. If you're wrong, your ass is grass. They must have shot it down. Yeah, but what the hell was it? They're giving it a new code number, 099. Terminated with extreme prejudice. It's a critic. And I hope we're not starting World War III. What does it say exactly? Yeah, where's that? Well, you, you just said that... You just said the National Security Agency wasn't going to do anything about it. What can we do about it? Okay. All right, well, you know where I am, right? Yeah. Important? No, just the usual panic, you know. Good. Mm. Thank you. They canceled it. I don't believe it. What are those asshole civilians doing? The dumb bastards. What do they think we're doing here? Jerking off? If we judge it to be critic, goddammit, it is a critic. When was the last time we sent one? Twelve months ago? Christ, the Soviets have shot down a goddamn plane here. Shit. I think we should resubmit. What, and get our asses kicked again? Send a critic and it gets canceled. It's gonna look real good on my record. Write home to your mom about it. Muller. Sergeant Duffy, please. This is Anderson. It's the field station at Wakanai. Watch it, it's an open line. Duffy here. Duffy, look, I tell you, we got some really bizarre activity here, man. I mean, unusual. I stress, unusual. Hold on for a second, we, Andy? We got something to happen. What sort of activity? Use your imagination. They must have the Russian pilots. How, how do you want us to handle this? Look, you need this right away. In my view, an immediate pickup is essential. It's on its way. What do they got? They got tapes. Get your little pen out, sir. They need a plane and you're the only one who can authorize it. It's a big deal. You bet your ass it's a big deal. We need it. And now. Base Commander, we'll get him up. This is Captain Ames, Flight Commander of the 6920th. We need a plane pronto. Sarge, okay, I'll Japanese wait. Japanese TV news have just reported a Korean Airlines 747 is missing somewhere in the Pacific. Oh, my God. They wouldn't do that. Not even the Russians would do that.
Right. Well. Jesus. I'll do more than that. You understand? This is an air incident. We're gonna be expected to know all about it by morning. I want the best story in town. Very best. Serious, dear? Hmm. Read about my papers. Morning. Yes, sir. Okay, thank you, sir. Anything? The plane's here from Wackenai. The tapes. Okay, let's move it. I'll get them. Who's the best Russian translator we've got? Jamie. Get Jamie. He's off duty now. He can forget sleep. Who's on intelligence liaison tonight? Morton Pringle. Good. We know how many Americans are on board? No, I haven't got the passenger list yet. Should we warn the secretary? No, not yet. Let's just see how it plays. Uh, listen, I'll get back to you on that trip. As soon as I got anything. Okay, thanks. What do you got? Well, National Security Agency is getting critic messages from their people in Japan. It seems there's some unusual and extraordinary activity over Sakhalin Island. Russian fighters scrambled, reports of an aircraft shot down, and a Korean Airlines 747 is missing. Anybody make a direct connection? No, no one can at this moment in time. The CIA, the Pentagon, no one's got any heart. So that thing's confirmed, right? No, the NSA canceled the critic, but uh, I'm not so sure they're right. The plane was on a direct flight from New York to Seoul. What the hell is this island, anyway? We got a map around here? Yeah, it's one of the offices. What do you think about it? I can't believe it. I don't want to believe it. The implications are mind-blowing. Now, the plane flew from New York to Anchorage. It refueled. And then this should be the flight path to Seoul. See? Well, that isn't anywhere near the Russian airspace. Why would they shoot him down? I know. Shoot down what? Deep inside Soviet territory, up here over Sakhalin. Doesn't make any sense. The intelligence agencies think the two may be connected. Well, what are they saying? That they deliberately shot down the no, plane? No, no, they're not saying they shot it down. They're saying it's possible they shot it down. Son of a bitch. Whoa. Plane doing hundreds of miles an hour. I don't give a goddamn if it was over Red Square. You don't shoot down a plane with oh, a civilian. We don't know that they did. It could have been a coincidence. Oh, yeah. Hell of a coincidence. Listen, you just get a hold of our people in Moscow and see if they know anything. Yeah. What? There are 66 Americans on that plane. Oh, Jesus Christ. Including the chairman of the John Birch Society. Larry McDonald was on that plane? Yeah. Christ. That's all we need. Every crazy in America is going to think the Russians were after him. Okay, who's at the Soviet embassy? Sokolov. Get him. How are you going to play it? Rough. Come on, move it. Jesus, they got the genius out of bed. Come on, it's unintelligible. Come on, come on. This is the I am turning to a course of 30. Roger. I'm closing on the target. Distance to target is eight kilometers. No, that's not right. You said sim, the seven. Wasin, eight. All right. I have already switched it on. The weapon system. Now I will try rockets. So 
somewhere quiet. That's what he said. He clearly said it. He yelled it. He fired a live missile. Was it the Korean? There's no indication of that. The Korean goes nowhere near Soviet airspace. God damn it, even the Russians don't shoot down unarmed civilian aircraft. Sir, this is the last of the translation. Thank you. The target is destroyed. It's here. He clearly said it. The target is destroyed. Duffy, what the hell are you doing? I'm watching myself grow old. I'm... I'm not holding back. That's all we need. We can't find it. Well, I'm very grateful. You know. I'm not interested in all these denials, sir. This is getting us nowhere. That's right. Look. Mr. Charge. Mr. Charge, let me make this absolutely clear. We have reports that the aircraft is down and it was brought down by Soviet armed forces. Now, if this is the case, we've got a very difficult problem on our hands here, and I expect you to call Moscow, find out what happened, and get back to me. Is that clear? No, nothing denies everything. Our people in Moscow have nothing. Absolutely well, What the hell's going on here? I think that shit would have hit the fan somewhere by now. Yeah, I'll what tell you what's so going on. Everybody's contradicting everybody else. The guys at the listening post in Japan are hopping up and down sending critic messages. As soon as they arrive, the NSA are canceling them. They say there's not enough to wake the president. What are you going to do? Are you going to inform Secretary Schultz? Well, what do you want me to tell him? Intelligence can't make up its mind? The Russians deny everything? Well, that's the standard Soviet well, response. Well, nothing's firming up. TV's got something. It's coming up now. Well, look, I can't find anything. Find anything. Would you let me know? Well, we're just going to Wait, wait, hold it. Welcome back. Now, more about the missing Korean airliner. We have an unconfirmed report from Korean Airlines that their Boeing 747 has force landed on the island of Sakhalin off the Russian Pacific coast. It is not yet clear if the aircraft was forced down by the Soviets, but there is apparently no loss of life among the 300 Hello. people on board. Did you hear that? It looks like we can wind it up. Check these sources, maybe we can all get some sleep. Well, believe me, I wish we had as well. It's been hours, we've been going crazy here. You believe it's safely down? I don't know. I want some more proof. You know, you're uh, being damn cool about all this, Rick. We may be talking about 300 dead here. Listen, what do you think we're doing in that building, huh? I think we're supposed to jump off the roof the first time we hear a bang. I'm not saying jump off the roof. My job is to manage this crisis, not make it worse. By tomorrow morning, if that flight's down, we're going to have people all over this town screaming for retaliation. Yeah, I'll be screaming the loudest. Look, Dave, just don't forget what's involved here, OK? Yeah, like you getting your cruise missiles into Europe for a start. Yeah, regardless of the price. I didn't set the price. Now maybe some of those European pacifists will begin to understand the nature of the beast we're dealing with here. Jesus Christ. You mean, so you'll have a great hand to play with the Russians? That's right. Listen, David, the only thing the goddamn Soviets understand is negotiate through strength. Years of work could be wiped out here. Listen, we let the crazies carry the ball on this. They're going to kick it right into World War III. Some of these missiles don't even work. So what? They don't have to unless there's a war. Besides, Schultz needs all the bargaining chips he can get. Look, if they shot that plane down, we're gonna nail him. Nobody in my book kills 300 people and gets away with it. Okay? Mr. Burt! Mr. Burt! just had an update from Japan. The plane is not safe on Sakhalin. The conclusion is it was definitely the Russian target. God damn 
son of a bitch. Bastards! Rick, you've got to tell Secretary Schultz. Listen, I don't need you telling me what to do. I'm handling this thing. You got it? It wouldn't be the first time you've done it someplace. Someone of this crazy covert act. What is this? I don't know what I'm saying, but it would be nice if you had some integration about the intelligence for Christ's sake. Well, we this talk 32. This is mine. Is a crock. It's it's inarticulate. It's inaccurate. It's not good enough. You all better hang a little loose. This place is going to blow. Look, we have to have that briefing set in two hours. He wants the best we've got. Now you better take a look at this. We got the flight plan for the Korean plane now. And this is the track that he should have been on. Keeps him all out of danger. Who's handling army liaison? You can't hear yourself thinking here. Now, this is the track he should have been on, but Russian radar picked him up over here. That still doesn't explain shooting down a civilian. Maybe they didn't know it was a civilian. Now you're looking here. What is that? This is the flat path of a cobra ball. Cobra ball. I mean, we had a goddamn spy plane in there. Yeah, but only by the time of the shoot-down, he's headed home. Hold it. Oh, what are you getting at? I've been talking to our guys in the Pacific, and last night we had a Cobra Ball plane in the area here to monitor a Russian missile shot, but it never came off, so they sent him home. Now, he would have disappeared off Soviet radar just about here. So he's off the screen, and they forget about him. So what? And in no time at all... They see him coming on their screens. Right about here. A great big blob of Boeing 707 packed to the roof and all that spying shit. And it's headed right into their backyard. I thought you said the ball went home. He did, but Ivan doesn't know that. What he's got on the screen is a Korean, but he thinks it's a Cobra ball coming back. An American spy plane flying straight over their bases. Oh, the hell, Mr. Broke, please. I still don't understand why the Korean was there in, in the first place. He had to be insane to fly over Russia. Maybe he didn't know he was. Maybe he screwed up. All right, but the Russian pilot had to see what he was firing at. The ball is a 707, and the Korean is a 747. You can't mistake the two. We don't know we eyeballed it. Oh, Jesus Christ, you are dumping this whole thing right in our lap. We weren't the son of a bitch to shut it down. All I'm saying, it could have been an almighty screw-up. The Russians thought one of our spy planes was flying straight over their patch. Nobody's gonna like that idea. My job is to analyze intelligence. I don't give a damn what they want to hear. I'll give them what I think that. All right, but you can't mistake a 747 for a 707 because a 747 has got that big goddamn op in its back. I got someone I want you to meet. What time was that? You okay, buddy? You want a coffee or something? Oh, I'm fine, sir. I appreciate you coming in. This is Colonel O'Hara. Gene, this is Captain Beals. Captain Beals served a spell in the Pacific. He flew refueling tankers. Uh, tell him what you told me. I refuel 707s. Cobra Bowl? Yes, sir, the ball. And tell him about it at night. Well, at night, that is a bitch of an operation. Why? Night flying is kind of weird, Colonel. You're, uh, you're disoriented. You haven't got any sense of scale or, or distance. And it's real hard to make out what's out there. I tell you, one mission I flew right up to Japan Airlines 747. Passenger plane. I was trying to hook up to him with my fuel line. That chap pilot must have needed a change of underwear after that. Mm -hmm. So we've got pilots now. Pilots. Who can't distinguish between a 747 and a 707. Look, sir. At night, they turn out the lights and pull down the blinds so the passengers can sleep. In the dark, you can't tell that's an airliner. And if you want to take out an enemy aircraft, you come up from behind and below. You just wouldn't see that hump on the 747. I'm, there's no way to identify it.
hit them where it hurts, in one of their satellite states. Uh, interdict their arms supply, stop their ships, close down their embassies. There's even more we could do. Uh, how does the president feel about this, sir? Have you spoken with him yet? Yeah, I have no doubt that he will see it in the same way, yes. Thank you, sir. My God, the Soviets are going to pay the price on this one. I took better pictures in the eighth grade. Insufficient color definition. That's exactly what he's going to say. I can hear it right now. Look, we have to have those KAL pictures. Archives is closed, sir. What do they keep? Bankers' hours? We're trying to reach the bureau chief. Well, then reach them. I don't give a rat's ass how. Yes, Just sir. get them. We aren't going to have a briefing with, with travel agency pictures. Don't even think about lighting that. It'll have both our ads. Heads up. General Tyson. Morning, gentlemen. Morning, gentlemen. Gentlemen, at 0830 hours, I will brief the Air Force Chiefs. They, in turn, will brief the Joint Chiefs of Staff. I want our people to have the best story in town, not the CIA, not the NSA, us. Okay, what have we got? Gentlemen, sir, there has been an incident in the Far East in which a Soviet combat plane has shot down a civilian flight. Any indicators? Indicators, sir. The Soviets on alert. Any troop movements, more air patrols? No, sir. Ship still in port? Yes, sir. What do you infer from that? They're not expecting retaliation, sir. Perspicacity does your credit, Captain. But it indicates something else to me, that whatever they did, they did it very, very hurriedly. It was an isolated act. I think we can take it, gentlemen, we're not about to go to war. Proceed. On screen is the flight track of Flight 007. What flight? 007, sir. Is that Pan Am Flight 007? K-A-L, sir. In state, so. Yes, sir. A flight 007 of the Korean Airlines. The other track is his actual flight path. Not sufficient color definition. Yes, sir. Do we have anything in the area? Did we? Sir, a Cobra ball was in the area, but it was back on the ground two hours before the incident. Look, Major, you know it was back on the ground, and I know it was back on the ground. Did they know? In my view, they did not, sir. Explain, Major. Daniel, sir. May I have the next picture, please? Uh, here's the common shot uh, peninsula, General, and there's the track of the ball flying a figure of eight and waiting for the missile shot that never comes off. And around 1 a.m., he was called home, so he hauled ass. And uh, he would have left Soviet radar just about here. And then in no time at all, the uh, Korean plane comes back in on the same heading. At what altitude? 30,000 bucks, sir. Bucks, Major? Feet, General, 30,000 feet. Proceed, Major.
Joint Chiefs of Staff are very concerned about this. Change is everything. Nobody else has come up with it. Are you absolutely sure of these conclusions? On the evidence available, yes, sir. So the Soviets simply goofed up? Yes, sir. Well, that's a hell of a mistake. They're not very good at radar. My view is that they had the Cobra ball on the scope and screwed up on the reading, missed the ball leaving the area. So they didn't identify the plane? Apparently not. I mean, do you realize the implications of what you're saying? It was an accident. Yes, sir. There's no chance this Korean was on a crazy cowboy mission, was it? Not to Air Force's knowledge. Look, it's a good analysis, Tom. It's very good. And nobody else has called it like this. But I think we're going to push it right to the top. I appreciate that, Admiral. All right. Secretary Schultz arrives in 30 minutes. What do we recommend? Report. One, they had no provocation. Two, they identified the plane. Three, they shot it down. Source. CIA are 95% sure they identified the plane as civilian. Yeah. In other words, a knowing, deliberate shoot-down. Evidence. The tapes from Japan, they're not fully translated yet, but so far the gist is they show the Russian pilot seeing the plane, seeing the navigation lights, and only then firing his rockets. There were no warnings recorded, nothing. Was he ordered to fire from the ground? That's the usual procedure. Conclusions? All the agency input confirms shoot down after identification. All right. Also advise the secretary. Have you spoken to the networks? Yeah. I suggested that Secretary Schultz go on the air at 10, 10 a.m. Okay, gentlemen. We go to the ball. Watch office. How you doing? Uh, yes, sir. Yes, he is. Sir? Chief. Yes, sir. <clears throat> Thank you. Very good, sir. Thank you for calling. Yes, sir. Ladies and gentlemen, may I offer you my congratulations. The Joint Chiefs are so impressed with your work that it is at this moment on its way to the White House. All right! All right. My Air Force has shown the whole intelligence community what good analysis is. It's mainly hard work. Attention to detail. Sir, Secretary Schultz is making a statement. Turn it up. Soviets tracked the commercial airliner for some two and one half hours. A Soviet pilot reported visual contact with the aircraft at 1812 hours. The Soviet plane was, we know, in constant contact with its ground control. At 1821 hours, the Korean aircraft was recorded by the Soviet pilot at 10,000 meters. Oh boy. Why don't they just call up the at Russians? Hours, invite them over the here so they can really see what we're capable of. Hey, when these guys came in, they memoed everybody about keeping our work a total secret. We didn't exist. Now he goes on primetime TV and tells the Soviets we're trapping our radar. Jesus. The United States reacts with revulsion to this attack. Loss of life appears to be heavy. We can see no excuse whatsoever for this appalling act. Secretary, will this make any difference in the way the United States deals with the Soviet Union? For example, your meeting with uh, Foreign Minister Gromyko. Well, I certainly will want to meet with Foreign Minister Gromyko and hear what he has to say about this. Jesus Christ! We expect to hear from the Soviet 270 people dead, and he's still talking about talking. We have has come into our hands. to hold our heads high in this world. He must be stopped. Plane. Secretary of State Schultz speaking a few minutes ago. Jane Leonard is at the State Department in Washington. Jane, Secretary Schultz seemed in no doubt that this was a deliberate act. 
No doubt at all. The State wait, Department wait. officials have told us that the Russian fighter could see the airliner clearly, perhaps oh, even see the Korean pilot. He could see it was a 747, clearly marked KAL Korean Airlines. Oh, oh no, no one knows they identified it. After all, they were tracking... Oh, reporter, go check the lines. The whole damn lot of them. It's a fairy tale. Secretary Schultz clearly feels this was a premeditated act. Come on, Mankowski, give us a break. We've been already over this a dozen times already, man. Gentlemen, gentlemen, order in here. I turn now to the preposterous suggestion. There is nothing preposterous about that. To the preposterous suggestion that the Soviets mistook an innocent civilian aircraft for one of our own planes, the Cobra Ball reconnaissance plane. Now, here are the two planes. I ask you, could they be confused with each other? Yes, Our yes, experts say no. Oh, the well. Soviets knew exactly what they were doing. That's a complete and if distortion they didn't, of the situation. They're equally culpable because they should have known what they were doing. We so, should no. still consider the possibility that it was an accident. Of course we should. Ridiculous. No. So what do you want to do? You want to nuke Moscow? Is that no. it? No. Uh, That's exactly no. What I want a response in proportion to the deed. If you murder somebody, you get punished, right? Look, there are more important issues at stake here. Like arms talks? The Madrid arms conference. Cancel oh. Madrid. What? <laughs> you saw yes. TV. You heard Secretary Schultz. We're going. Period. We've got to take a responsible attitude here. Now, I counsel caution and due consideration. <laughs> <laughs> look, 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 look. Before every summit, the Soviets test us to see whether we want it or not. And it's like, it's like offering an alcoholic who hasn't had a drink in two weeks a glass of wine. And then, just as he's about to take it, you spit in his drink. Well, that's what the Soviets have done. They spat in our drink. That's a completely disgusting analogy. I don't see us getting anywhere here. I'm not going to waste any more of my time in this unseemly debate. This meeting should have had a chairman. Leaving the leaves. What a surprise. Uh, gentlemen, gentlemen. Now, we have got a job to do here. Let's get this speech written. If Secretary Schultz meets Gromyko in Madrid, it will be an outrage. It will be a moral abdication. You are not the guardian of the nation's morals. What would we achieve by his staying away? Sometimes not talking is a way to send a very loud message. Precisely. Right? Very good Cold War thinking. Thank you. Oh. We have to keep the lines of communication open. I can't believe this. More Americans were killed on that plane. I know, than the Ayatollah held hostage. You keep saying that over and over again. We have got to hurt them. We have to hurt them in Cuba. Hurt them in Berlin. Yes, oh, sir. This is the time to roll them back. We're here to write a speech. We're not here to declare war. Nobody is right. talking about Let's declaring get it done. war. Are you ready, soldier? Yes, sir. Right. Now, this is a memo to the president from the National Security Council. Yeah. Suggested public statement on the Korean airline shootout. Okay, somebody got an opener? My fellow Americans. Well, that's original. Oh, give it up. Thank you. I'm here to speak to you tonight about a cold-blooded murder. That's very provocative. Come on, that's completely offensive. But who are you afraid of offending? Andropov? A man who entertains every terrorist and every thug in the world? This is the President of the United States speaking, not some street corner orator. He has to express regrets about the death of those passengers, especially Congressman McDonald. Absolutely. This is human lives we are talking that about here. That is exactly the point that we should be driving home to the Soviets. You want me to scrub this opening? Yes, absolutely. Scrub it. That briefing of yours. They want to know why you let those bastards off the hook. I haven't let anyone off the hook. Well, that's what the White House says. I gave this report my best shot. Now it's in the trash can. Jesus Christ, Tom, 269 people died in that plane. I'm as upset about that as anyone. Doesn't mean we go eyeball to eyeball every time there's an incident. You are excusing them. That's not true. We called it the way we saw it, a screw-up. You're going to keep on pushing that? That's what our analysis points to. Because, Tom, you're making a big mistake. I was there. You know, they were all agreed on it. Everyone. 
I mean, the State Department, the CIA, the Cabinet, even George Bush. Now, what the hell have you got, a special line of God Almighty? Look at the tracks of both the aircraft. Both aircraft? The 747 and Cobra Ball. Oh, I forget about that. As far as they're concerned, Cobra Ball doesn't even figure. No one wants to know about that. The Soviets put up fighters to shoot down an unarmed civilian. Now, that is murder in anybody's language. Now, what the hell would they call it if we did it? Well, sir, if uh, the White House has put it together this way, uh, and if their point of view is, is uh, all the information that's available to them, I'm not about to go running down there and contest their general conclusion. Well, believe me, that's their conclusion. They are not going to let the Soviets get away with it. Tom, drop it! Now they want to know where the hell you got that cockamimi idea in the first place. I want that line left in. It doesn't fit. Oh, yes, read does. the it's goddamn thing. Yeah, right. All right, Go all right, on. okay. Beyond these feelings, the world notes the stark contrast that exists between Soviet words and actions. actions. It's concise. Yeah, it's okay, but feelings here should be emotional. Oh, what? You stop oh, it. Oh, this sounds better. Actions should be deeds. What the hell are you nitpicking? What's the hell is this? The regime that has broadly trumpets its visions of peace and global disarmament and so callously and quickly commits a terrorist act to oh, come come sacrifice on, the lives of innocent human beings. You can't say that. What can, what can be said about Soviet act. credibility no, 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 when no, they no, so flagrantly no, lie no about chance. such a heinous act? Oh, that's that's come on. What can be said about Soviet credibility when they so flagrantly lie about such a heinous act? What can be the scope of legitimate mutual discourse with a state whose values permit such atrocities? And what are we to make of a regime which establishes one set of standards for itself and another for the rest of humankind? The brutality of this act should not be compounded through silence or the cynical distortion of the evidence now at hand. To the families of all those on the ill-fated aircraft, we send our deepest sympathy. And I hope they know our prayers are with them all. I'm sorry, General. I didn't know it was you. Uh, Should be off duty, Major. I just can't seem to leave this thing alone, sir. What thing? Well, I got all the Russian transcripts now. Uh, sure as hell adds up to a different story than the one the politicians are pushing. The line's been taken, Major. That line sucks, sir. It ain't the truth. Well, we may be wrong. The White House may have information we haven't. If you don't mind me saying so... But I do mind, Major. I mind very much. I mind your attitude a whole lot. personnel about it tomorrow. It doesn't fit here. It's flippant, it's disrespectful, it sets a bad example. He's out. 
Yes, sir. It's a disgrace. Bert's going in advance to set it up. <laughs> the blind leading the blind. Bert knows virtually nothing about Soviet affairs, and he will be advising a secretary of state who knows even less. I don't understand him. He's a Reagan man. He's no bleeding heart liberal. The spotlight will be on Madrid. And that's exactly where Bert wants to be, right in the center of it. I was sure the president would go hard on this one. Pillow talk, Frank. What? First lady no longer likes the image of the shoot from the hip president. We're not going to get anything on this. There'll be some shouting, a few harsh words. We'll ban an Aeroflot flight or two, and that'll be that. A shameful episode for the United States. Admitted responsibility. At least, at least, we can force them to do that. People must realize that Russia is not just a potential enemy, it is the enemy. Hey. Lenkowski's still beating his drum in there. Yeah, he doesn't seem to have a whole lot of time for you guys. He's a sore loser. Because of Madrid? Yeah, because of Madrid. Come on, we have a chance to do something in Madrid. That's what these guys don't understand. That's what it's all about, trying to get something done, but not just kicking the shit out of the Russians. Yeah, but Lenkowski's not going to get Lenkowski. Look, the guy can talk tough, but he's not going anywhere with this. Things are changing around here. One of these days, we're going to have to stop screaming at the Russians. And when we do, guys like Lenkowski are out. his elevators go to the top. Well, he's a stickler for form. And let's face it, you're not. I guess I've been thrown out of school. Well, you have a very original way of putting things. Well, why do you send your kids to school? Well, to get them an education and make good grades. Is that all? Well, that's all my daddy was interested in. Bad gradesmen are good licking. School is meant to teach you to question. Why is that, sir? And that's what we're supposed to be doing here. We got raw data, we're supposed to analyze it and pass our conclusions on to our masters. That takes a little time. Politicians, they get their raw facts and they jump to conclusions. They don't want to wait around for us. We gave them some pretty good stuff on this one. Yeah, they didn't want to hear it. Okay, let's do it. This is real hard for me, Hank. You didn't swing the axe. They wanted to hear that Ivan was an animal. That's the main thing, define the enemy as animals. And that is necessary to define ourselves as human. Well, shooting down that plane was not exactly a humane act. But the point is that Ivan is human, and he screwed up under pressure. But Ivan is the enemy. 
That's the one true fact. Do you know how many reconnaissance flights... Oh, Hank, flight... what's this got to do with Do you know how many reconnaissance flights we run? 600 a day, worldwide. Now, if Ivan did that to us, we consider it close to war. Well, that's our job, to prevent war. Our job is not to prevent war. It's to be better prepared for it than they are. And we'll take each other to the line once too often. The 747 has a unique and distinctive silhouette, unlike any other plane in the world. There is no way a pilot could mistake this for anything other than a civilian airliner. They deny the deed, but in their conflicting and misleading protestations, the Soviets reveal that, yes, shooting down a plane, even one with hundreds of innocent men, women, children, and babies, is a part of their normal procedure if that plane is in what they claim as their airspace. This was the Soviet Union against the world and the moral precepts which guide human relations among people everywhere. It was an act of barbarism, born of a society which wantonly disregards individual rights and the value of human life and seeks constantly to expand and dominate other nations. He's pretty jumpy. He wants to talk to you now. This guy is the key. He knows what went on that night. Are you sober? Uh, not altogether, no. I think we've hit about every bar in Seoul. So where are you? Yeah, 22 Itaewon. And you know where that is. Okay, keep it there. I'll be there. Right. was Captain Chung, a good pilot. Captain Chung was my friend. We were lucky when we were young. We were flyers. We flew the plane. Now the plane flies us. Captain Chung forgot that. Tell me about it. The first thing you must do when you get into the aircraft is to switch the computer to alignment. You must tell it exactly where you are and where you want to go. You must feed in the map references. Then the plane must stay on the ground absolutely still until the computer lines itself up. How long? Usually 20 minutes. But if a mistake is made and the aircraft is moved too soon, the computer is disturbed before it is properly lined up. It can give you false information and you can begin to drift off course. I believe that night, flight 007 was moved too early. The plane was being flown by the computer. It was heading for its first waypoint over the Pacific Ocean. But things were already going wrong. We are late in arriving at a waypoint, Captain. Huh? Ten minutes late at waypoint Neva. 
The computer was slowly causing the plane to drift off course. Captain Chen must have realized this, but decided to go on. Anchorage, Korean Air 007. Come in, please. Anchorage, 007. Reply, please. Captain, I cannot make contact with Anchorage or VHF. Try the high frequency radio. I have tried. They don't respond. He could no longer make radio contact. He was in trouble. Chen should have turned back. Why didn't he? He was a very proud man. Anyone can make a mistake? Not Chen. You know what makes a good pilot these days? Best flyer. No, sir. Not now. A good pilot is the one who saves the most fuel. Very important. How flower. If he turns back, the plane would be too heavy to land, full of fuel. He would have to dump it into the sea. Thousands and thousands dollars worth all in the sea. He would have been disgraced. He'd lose face. Exactly. He would not allow that. He was a good flyer. If it was only a small fault, he would go on. At first, the deviation in the computer would have seemed so slight. But when it became serious, it would have been too late to turn back. He was past the point of no return. That night, I was following Jun, just a few minutes behind. Right, 007 says he's just passing waypoint Neva. He can't make contact with Anchorage. He's asking us to relay the position. Passing Neva now. That means he's only four minutes ahead of us. He should be 15. One captain never questions another. It is like accusing him of not being able to do his job. Get me, Captain Chen. 07, come in, please. Captain Chen, come in. Captain Chen, come in. Captain Chen, come in. Captain Chen, Gija, I knew he could not be where he was claiming to be. When I spoke to him, he was not himself. He was not calm. And I knew what he was telling me was false. But I went along with it. I continued to relay the position reports he was giving me. And I knew that it was all wrong. По-прежнему не подает опознавательных сигналов. Присваиваю ему код 088. Самолет противника. 
Товарищ генерал-лейтенант, мне нужно знать больше. Товарищ генерал-лейтенант, он должен быть американским. Он не дает позывных. Мы не, у нас нет данных о наших самолетах у берегов Камчан. Товарищ генерал-лейтенант, мне нужно решение. Немедленно. Так точно. Сигнализировать ему. Алло! Алло! Да, повторите. 805. Понятно. Мы должны Понятно. постараться да. привлечь его внимание. Я скажу. Подать ей. Елки-палки! Я же ракеты перевел на автосопровождение. Мне надо подойти ближе. Выключаю автосопровождение. Tokyo Radio, Korean Air 007. Korean Air 007, Tokyo. Korean Air 007, requesting flight level 350. Korean Air 007, clearance. Set climb power. Thirty-two thousand feet. Air speed down to two eight zero. Маневр уклонения. Чего они теперь требуют? Должны уже они принимать решение в конце концов. Я не могу преследовать его. Я уже рядом. Так они хотят, чтобы мы открыли огонь или нет? Они говорят, мы должны поступать по уставу. По уставу? Ну достань устав. Что ты сидишь? Мы не можем ошибаться. Достань Я не его. знаю, да его переделывали. Ну найди его. Ну, статья 36. Какие будут указания? Давай, читай. Какие указания? В случае, когда нарушение советского воздушного пространства остановить не удается, так. или нарушителей нельзя задержать другими средствами, так. применять оружие и боевое Но. снаряжение. Можно применяться? Применять? Главные баки машин пустые. И придется выходить из боя. Американец выйдет в международное воздушное пространство через 90 секунд. Иван Михайлович, у вас нет выбора. Я, я не могу в это поверить. Я не могу. Неужели это правда? 805-й. Включить боевую систему. По 
Моя твоя система уже включена. Боевые головки ракет на автосопровождении. Теперь попробуй ракеты. Запустил! Уничтожено! Блять, проклято!